All right, guys, we got a 2010 Camaro that uh, they are complaining that the uh, heat doesn't work very good. They've had it diagnosed at a shop. They said that the blend air door is broke. And if you've seen my other video of replacing it, this is going to be an update to uh, what I've learned. I've done about six of these cars now replacing the blend air door. And these are the steps that I go through and the way that I do it. I use a different method for cutting the uh, heater box out. I still use a hot knife, but it's a different way I go about it. So uh, I want to show you the first thing I do to verify that the door is indeed uh, broke. Okay, if you look right up here, you can see a sensor. And we got to pull that sensor out, which is nothing more than turning it. Sometimes you can turn it with your fingers. Sometimes you got to use needle nose pliers. Quarter turn. Sorry, I'm it. We got the sensor out. We got a hole up there. Take the bore scope. And this is just an inexpensive bore scope. And I'm going to feed it in there and we're going to see if that door uh, works or not. Okay, you can see the evaporator and the heater core and the door. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that door back and forth. Okay, so I am trying to run the door, and it is definitely not running. That's full hot. I can hear the actuator running. Then we can probably, let me straighten this bore scope out a little bit and go in even deeper. And yeah, you can see right there where it's broke. It's twisted. So that's definitely the problem. So now we'll start taking that side apart over there. And uh, I'll try to show more details. I've had people... Uh, ask questions on how to do this or how to do that because I didn't cover it real good in my first video so I'm going to try to make sure that uh, all that's covered in this video okay the first step you want to do is move the seat all the way forward I usually recline the or yeah recline the seat forward also the back because you got to get to these t50 torques you could probably do this with the seat in but I'm telling you right now there's two bolts there's a connector the seat comes out it's going to make your life a lot easier having this seat out. I mean, if you got an air tool, especially. Ah. Ah. And there's a connector right here. I'm going to have to set the camera up so you can see how the connector comes apart. You can push the seat forward. Now normally this is locked into the into the uh, floor. This other half of this connector has been broke. So people's been in here before. But there's a little piece right there that whenever you pull this out, this whole connector comes off. And like I say, this piece here should be 
See, it's been broke, so it should it should stay snapped to the body of the car. But someone's been in here before. But all you need to know, take a screwdriver, pull this out, and then this connector comes up, comes off. Now, fortunately, this car is very clean, so that is very good. Sometimes these things are a pigsty, but this one's actually in good shape. So let me get set up underneath the dash here, and I'll show you what starts to come out under it. Okay, the, before I even get started underneath here, if you grab this piece of trim, it just pulls, it pulls off. So get that out of your way. And that opens up a little bit of area underneath here. And they've got some aftermarket deal installed here. So hopefully that's not going to be in my way. But this duct right here has got to come out. That's the very first thing. Okay, so you got some 7 millimeters, or at least that's what I'm using. I think they're actually 7 30 seconds. But or 9.30 seconds. There's only two. And there's one right here. And this is where my favorite ratchet, if you don't have a good little quarter inch ratchet, uh, you need to make sure you have one because it'll make this job go a lot easier. And a lot of people worry about the body control module. It is nothing to worry about. I have not disconnected the battery. Probably be a good idea if you're worried about that, but I've never had a problem. I have a scan tool to reset any kind of faults. Now you should not have this wire here. I don't know what this wire is. Some aftermarket deal. And then this thing, now you, you do kind of have to struggle with it a little bit but you'll eventually get it to come down so let me get both hands going here Now here's the body control module. What I typically do is I take every one of these connectors off. Uh, I don't know if you're actually seeing that. You're probably not seeing any of that, are you? There's a clip right here. Here, let me. You move this clip, and this body control module will come down. There is a harness right here that sometimes it gets hung up on. You just push it out of the way. And these uh, connectors, there's just a little tab right here that I'm pushing, and these connectors will pop right off. I'm doing this one handed. Let me get that thing clipped back up in there. Doing this one handed is not the easiest thing to do. Sorry guys, I had, to do, had to get to both hands after it. Now the body control module will come all the way down. You do not have to remove the uh, um, throttle sensor position sensor, whatever, whatever the heck they call it. And I'm just shoving these wires up out of my way. That's all I do. Shove them kind of up there. Now you've got access. Let me get rid of this little wire. I don't know. Now you've got access to the uh, uh, blend door actuator. Yeah, these are five and a half millimeter. And again, you want to have the right little ratchet to be able to get to them. Also, if you don't have a boroscope, 
this is where you're going to definitely be able to verify whether your blend door actuator is bad or not now you got a screw right here you've also got one up here you really can't see it get the camera up here i don't know if you was able to see that or not so you just kind of go by feel on it and right there so you can see that so there's the actuator the coupler is actually missing on this usually the coupler is still kind of hanging out right there so we're going to have to uh dig that coupler out of there so i'm going to mark this so that you can see um exactly where to cut we're going to take this screw and this screw out all right guys so this is what i started using to cut these this is just an exacto knife i've got a blade in it i do kind of grind the the uh, sharp point off but i just use this heat this up now i've pressed a wood handle onto this one but i used to do it without this wood so this little torch i got at harbor freight um of course the exacto knife can get anywhere but I just heat this thing up and I stick it in and cut right there on that dotted line that I've got. And you see how easy that cuts. And right up here at the top, you do want to cut kind of deep because uh, I'll show you whenever I get this piece out how uh, how far in that goes and I just keep heating it up this has got I mean it is a hot flame but it's it, it's a small flame so you don't have to worry about burning up your car wouldn't be a bad idea I guess to keep a little spray bottle of water just in case but I've never had an issue Once you get past this part here, it goes pretty quick. There's some hard plastic and stuff right up in here. Okay, I think we're about done here. Now the reason you want to follow this particular path is even if you don't seal around this, you've still got this screw and this screw that holds this piece back in. So, you know, you got two screws that's still holding it in and then of course I always seal it up with some uh, RTV. get about a three quarters of an inch to an inch along this horizontal piece and there's a piece of reinforcement that I'm coming up on that You'll be cutting along and then you'll start feeling it get a little, uh, a little whoop, tighter. And that's that reinforcement that you got to cut through. 
which I think is right there. It's just a little piece of uh, extra plastic they put right there. Can't see my light. My light's not where it needs to be. So now I just got this small vertical going up. And again, the reason I like using the hot knife, other than the the thin vertical or the thin cut line, is because you run less of a chance cutting into the uh, heater core. Give me just a second and I'll show you where the heater core is at so you can be extra careful. Just always be mindful of where the flame's at. You'll be all right. Okay, I'm going to reposition this light so I can see exactly where I'm at here. So that kind of give. I just want to give that a shot. Let me sit that down. Put the light back where it's at. Bear with me. Okay, so now at this point, so the heater core is along this vertical line right here. Your heater core sits right here. You do not want to puncture the heater core. So whenever you're sticking it in right here, just don't really, you know, push real hard. If you feel something solid, you know, don't, don't try to force through it. Remember, this plastic should be melting relatively easy as long as the tip is hot. So, uh... Just take it easy around this area here. Now all this is safe. You can go go to town all right here. But along this vertical line, just push it, push it in, and you'll feel whenever you hit the heater core, you'll feel it. But you won't be able to puncture through it unless you're just really getting crazy. That's why I actually take 
and I just shaved down this sharp point. I just want to uh, lessen the chance of that sharp point being able to pierce the uh, heater core. So at this point, I've got a couple of putty knives and some screwdrivers. I'm going to get in here, and you just start prying around this real easy and uh, breaking the little bits of plastic loose that has re-melted together, and uh, we should be able to get that out of there. So let me get some screwdrivers. I'd like to just try to, or I'd like to try to pry around here just to break the, uh, the plastic loose the best I can. Here's that little piece of reinforcement. This one's laying way down in here. There's the broke piece. And there's the door. There's where it breaks. Okay. That's pretty much it. Let me show you the uh, how I kind of clean it up to make it easier going back in. Here's the heater core right here. So you see what I mean? That you don't want to pierce into the side of it or the fins. That's what makes doing this job with a uh, hot knife probably the safest way because a hot knife isn't going to melt through that heater core but if you really get pushing hard on it or using a any kind of a like a saw or something you can pierce through that if you're not careful so just keep that in mind all right so at this point i'm going to uh Show the cleanup on the uh, on the, this piece of plastic. So basically, what I do is all this edge right here that's all nasty. I just take it. I want to get all that off. Also, this is that little piece of reinforcement. I cut that at a 45. This makes it easier going back in. Shave all this down.
this is just stuff I've kind of learned over doing eight of these. Give yourself a little bit of room here by getting rid of all this nasty. Anyway, uh, well, let me show you these and then I'm going to kill the camera so that I can finish this and then I'll show you what it looks like when I come back. This little edge right here, cut it at a 45 also. Without knocking it over your camera if you're doing your own video. I'm trying to do this with the camera in the way sometimes uh, just makes life harder. And I do the same thing up here on this piece right here. like that just makes putting this back in a lot easier you can use a file I've used a file before but I found that this right here seems to work really good anyway you get the point let me finish this and then I'll come back on. Now I also shaved the top part of this piece of flush. I've already went all the way around the perimeter. I've cleaned it all up. I take this piece and I cut it completely off. That will make it easier putting back in. And let me show you kind of what's going on. So, look at this piece with these little ridges or these little fingers in there. And then this piece here. So you've got two ridges, one here, one here. Let me show you what it's going to look like. So that ridge there is for the outboard one. Or that little recess rather. And then that recess there with the fingers, that's for that other one. So that's kind of what you're looking at. Hold on a minute. Let me turn some light on. So that's kind of what it's looking like right there. Just give you a close-up view of how that's got to fit back in there. So, and I am going to mount the camera back and go through the installation of it. Okay, first step is you got to put the door, the new door in. Now there's a little boss on the other in the uh, other end of this that this door's got to you got to make sure this door uh, makes its way into there. you'll know because you'll be able to swing this door by hand closed and open so now for the fun part the top's kind of got to go in first sometimes this will go in pretty easy other times, you gotta have some patience. So 
sometimes I'll go ahead and uh, put these two screws in and then pry the bottom up a little bit to get it to fall in. This will help pull it up. And hold the top of it while you pry the uh, bottom into position. Just want to make sure that the door turns the way it should. So we've pretty much got that in. Now I'm just going to go around this seam with some RTV. Now I like to use black. I don't have any black. All I've got is blue. So that's what I'm going to use. Not going to look pretty, but this is all covered up. And it's going to be effective. Now you could actually leave this just like this. This little gap right here. What little air would leak out of it uh, isn't going to make that big of a difference, but I always I always seal it up, just you know, just so it is. <clears throat> Guess I can dab a little bit. Actually, the way I've always tried to put the tube up there to it but the lights always blocked so I always end up just using my finger I'd get black you know just so it blends in better but I'm out of black at the moment This is where my finger doesn't really bend the way it needs to. But that's probably gonna, probably gonna call that good. And that's pretty much it. Uh, like I say, the important thing is make sure that this turns freely from one position to the other. And you should be good.
All right, at this point, you ready for your actuator? I'm gonna try to get this duct in with the body control module in. I'm pretty sure I keep that out first. But I'm, I can't remember. This is typically a pretty good little struggle. Throw these wires kind of out of my way. brackets back in. I'm going to go ahead and tighten up this duct. A different size socket. And then the body control module goes in and we're done. Now hopefully if you watch this video on my first one You'll get everything you need to be able to do this yourself. Everybody okay, control modules clipped in. So there it all is, I'll put back together. Except for this piece of trim right here. Looks about as easy. So we're done. Um, let me get the seat put back in. And then uh, I'll show you the calibration that I do because I've got a scan tool. Now, if you disconnect the battery and reconnect it, the car will auto-calibrate that door. Um, but since I have a scan tool, I just use the scan tool. Anyway, I'll be back whenever I'm ready to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to use my launch today, but my X tool would do this. My Autel does this. And what this is is an actuator's learn. Well, I clicked the wrong thing. Hold on. Now, the VCI's, uh, I just updated the firmware on this when I first turned it on, and that's 
updating the firmware to the VCI. So we'll give it just a minute. And I'll come back whenever that's finished. Okay, VCI finished the firmware update. So now we're here on the 2010 Camaro. And we're just going to do an actuator's learn. Uh, I'm going to go to system selection. And we'll find the, uh, the H back. Or the remote heater and air conditioning control module. That's what they're calling it. Special functions. Actuators learned. So, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and cooling actuators learned. Ignition is on. I don't know if you can hear the actuator moving. But what this does, it cycles all three of the actuators, the mode control, the uh, temp control, and the, uh, uh, there's a third one, I can't remember what they call it, but anyway, it cycles all three of those and it recalibrates them to where they'll be, the, so that the, the module knows when they're full open and full closed. So it's got a little countdown here. Again, you can disconnect the battery. Leave it disconnected for a couple minutes and then hook it back up, and the car is supposed to do this. I always use my scan tool simply because I've got one, but if you don't have one, I wouldn't sweat it. Uh, you'll probably be all right. This is just safety measure. Anyway, we're done. You guys take care. This does have an aftermarket uh, control panel here, too. This is not factory. And just to give you an idea of how long it took, I set my timer at the start of this job to an hour and 52 minutes. We're done. Uh, should give you a good idea of uh, what you're looking at in replacing that door. The door is available on Amazon. It's about $20. Um, I'll put the links to everything. And like I say, you might want to watch the first video I did a couple years ago. Uh, hopefully I got better footage on the actual cutout. And maybe some more stuff that I didn't cover in the, uh, in the first video. Anyway, hope this helps. You guys take care. Uh, oh, if you don't have a scan tool, it might be a good idea to disconnect the battery and reconnect it to uh, make sure that all your any kind of faults for uh, from disconnecting the body control module uh, clear out uh, sometimes I've noticed when I hook my scan tool up the body control module I have a, quite a few faults from, from it being disconnected even though the key's off doesn't appear to hurt anything I go ahead and clear everything with my scan tool if you don't have a scan tool just disconnect the battery and reconnect it and that will reset everything uh, and it should be good Anyway, you guys take care.